Hi everybody, Brad from Diesel Bookstore in Oakland, California. I like talking to you about books at the store so much that I thought, why not from home too? In the background, you're hearing a little bit of a Jason Molina's song, The Black Crow. Thought that'd be appropriate background music uh, to a few words of mine about Max Porter's debut novel, Grief is the Thing with Feathers. This is, I think, going to be one of the best reviewed books of the year kind of hands down, but it's also going to be one that plants itself in readers' minds and imaginations. Max has really done something special in this book. True to its title, it's about grief, and it sets up in what seems like a pretty standard way. A husband and a father has lost his wife, and he has to wind his way down and through and back out of grief. Uh, but this little book lets you know really quickly that it's up to something very different indeed. Grief is the center of the novel, but it never succumbs or withdraws into sentimentality. For such a short book, it's actually far more interested in expanding outward from the individual feeling and experience of grief. I love how much humor there is in the novel, as well as its deep sense of the surreal. The experience of death for the living, you could argue, really can't be told without either. Grief is a Thing with Feathers is a complex literary book, to be sure, but it's utterly accessible and familiar even. I really cannot recommend it highly enough. Here's a passage. This is what we know of Dad. He was a quiet boy. He drifted off on family walks. He doodled and drew, and his feelings were easily hurt by rough kids at school. He didn't have a head for sums. He spent the first 20 years of his life reading books, being not bad but not skilled at football and waiting for mum. He loved the Greek myths and Russians and Joyce. He was waiting to be our dad. And then our mom and dad were in love, and they were dr truly dry stone strong and durable, and people speak of ease and joy and spontaneity, and the fact that their two smells became one smell, our smell, us. Afterwards, he was quieter. He was, for two or three years, by all accounts, very odd. He had the perpetual look and demeanor of someone floating, turning in the beer gold light of evening and being surprised by the enduring warmth. A rolled over shoulder, half squint, half smile, caught baffled by the perplexing slow release of sadness forever and ever and ever. Which I suppose, looking back, was because of us. He couldn't rage. He couldn't want to die. He couldn't rail against an absence when it was grinning, singing, freckling in the English summer tweedledee-dum in front of him. Perhaps if Crow taught him anything, it was a constant balancing for want of a less dirty word, faith. A howling sorry, which is yes, which is thank you, which is onwards. Max is going to be in conversation with Anthony Mara, author of Constellation of Vital Phenomenon, as well as The Czar of Love and Techno, at the store in Oakland on College Avenue at 7 o'clock on Friday, June 24th. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this event, and I look forward to seeing you there as well. Thanks.